In today's age of heightened political tension, one message is causing a stir beyond all others. When people say Christ is king, it's sending the left into a tizzy. But what does it really mean? And why are certain groups painting it as a symbol of extremism? Today, we're getting into the layers of controversy, misinformation, and historic context to uncover the truth behind this powerful statement. The left is demonizing Christian nationalists as threats to our democracy. But are followers of Christ really the dangerous one? In this video, I want to expose the stunning hypocrisy and dismantle the vile smears against people of faith. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the most riveting five minutes of your day. The secular left has kicked the hornet's nest by going after Christianity in vicious terms, but they're about to get stung with the truth. Today, we're getting into a topic pretty controversial. It's got the leftists shaking in their boots. Christ is king. Yes, you heard me right. But wait until you hear why they're terrified. Now, where do we begin with this saga? The lefties, bless their hearts, are now attacking Christianity with the fervor of a child who's just discovered that they can't have candy for dinner. Every turn, every nook and cranny, they see a Christian nationalist as the boogeyman of democracy. Well, I'm here with a major reality check for the God-hating goblins trying to paint Christians as the enemy of democracy and American values at that. Can you believe the bile these radicals are spewing? They say we're not talking about everyday Christians. No, sir, we're talking about those evil Christian nationalists. And as time marches on in a classic fear-mongering fashion, suddenly all Christians are lumped into this category. Christian nationalism, folks, is about acknowledging our nation's roots in Christianity, ensuring that government actions reflect values that allow everyone to thrive. Sounds like a dictatorship, right? And then there's this gem, equating Christian nationalists to terrorists. Because, of course, believing in a nation under God is the real threat to democracy, not, say, a political ideology that's led to the most murderous regimes in history. But I'm just getting warmed up. So the narrative is that these Christian nationalists want God to take over everything. But if you did just a minute of research, you'd realize how hilariously wrong that is. The concept of Christ as king is not about a theocracy, but placing a moral authority above the state, a notion that seems to utterly confound our leftist friends. Christian nationalists believe that Christianity and its values and teachings helped shape and define the American nature and our culture. Not that we should have a theocracy, but that our secular government should allow people to live out their Christian beliefs freely. But let's cut to the chase. This isn't about religion or politics. It's about power. The left fears a society where moral absolutes dictate that something higher than government can guide us, the people. They'd rather see a world where moral relativism reigns, where chaos ensues, because in their eyes, when everyone can decide what's good and evil, nothing is. Christians believe that God determines what is good and what is evil. Yet, here's the crux of it all. Every society that has turned its back on God has sought to fill that void with something far less benign. And as history has shown, Nothing has ever been as beneficial to society as faith in something greater than ourselves, whether it's God or the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. When you remove God from society, man tends to abdicate the role of determining good from evil. And when everyone has the right to do that, then nothing is good and nothing is evil. That's what they believe. Here's where this Christ is King phrase that has them so triggered is really about. It started with 20th century popes wanting to uphold God's moral authority over the dangerous trend of people blindly worshiping the state as the supreme power, you know, like the fascists and communists were doing. Nothing to do with establishing a kingdom of God government. No, Christ as king means Jesus and his teachings are the highest moral code to live by. Not that we should be a ruler over nations. It refers back to the ultimate paradoxical example of Jesus, a humble man rejected by the world, yet still a true king by living in truth. Only when you accept these are absolute truths and ethical guideposts given by God, not by power-hungry men, can we have a society of ordered liberty where everyone can thrive. That's what the founders based America's system on. 
Okay, here's Heidi Persibilla of Politico on MSDNC explaining why Christian nationalists are so evil. Wait till you hear the stupidity of this woman. Right? Remember when Trump ran in 2016, a lot of the mainline evangelicals wanted mm-hmm. nothing to do with the divorced, uh, you know, real estate mogul who right. had cheated on his wife. Actually, he won them over in the votes. And with a porn star and all of that, right? So what happened was he was surrounded by this more extremist element who says extremist you're going to hear words like christian nationalism like the new apostolic reformation these are groups that you should get very uh very schooled on because they have a lot of power in trump's circle and the one thing that unites all of them because there's many different groups orbiting trump but the thing that unites them as christian nationalists not christians by the way because Christian nationalist is very different, Mm -hmm. is that they believe that our rights as Americans, as all human beings, don't come from any earthly authority. They don't come from Congress. They don't come from the Supreme Court. They come from God. The problem with that is that they are determining man, men, Mm -hmm. it is men, are determining what God is telling them. That's not it at all, the boneheaded woman here. Oh, my God, where to start? I guess by her definition, Thomas Jefferson is a Christian nationalist, and he's a terrorist. He's a threat to democracy. He wrote the Declaration of Independence, where he says, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, among them life, liberty, and property. Well, he said pursuit of happiness, but originally he wrote property. He changed it. But here she's saying that these guys are dangerous to democracy because they believe rights come from God. Well, that's what Thomas Jefferson said. It was different in that day from what was going on because you always had, like in England, you had a monarch. You had the king or the queen. You know, the monarchy ruled everything. They gave you your rights and they could take them away. And this dumb broad doesn't understand that when you have a government powerful enough to give you rights, then they are powerful enough to take them away. So no, Christians simply believing in God's moral governance isn't any threat to democracy. It's the exact opposite. It provides the foundation for human rights, human dignity, and freedom of conscience to flourish. The real threat is the secular authoritarians in the cult of all-powerful government who trash the very values that made this country great. All right, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.